So this book has the power to create the world. You know how God created the heaven and the earth? Let there be light. Yeah. Just by words. Word. And that words are in just one book of form. So they can create Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. So that's a powerful book. And Isaiah chapter 41, verse 21 to 24. So how do we know that the Bible is the word of God? How can you tell someone, if any like atheist asks you, how can you prove that the Bible is the word of God? What will you say? I will say this. Prophecy. Prophecy. The proof that you know that this Bible is the word yeah. of God is this book Truth. can tell the future yeah. and it has more than 1,000 prophecies in it and good. it has been fulfilled. fulfilled as it is written in the Bible. Yeah. So God, when God challenged other gods in the earth, there are false gods in the world, right? And God challenged them and He said, let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen in the future and declare us things for to come. Let those gods prophesy. Let those gods say what will happen in the future. Bring them on. Bring them on. Show the things that are to come hereafter that we may know that ye are gods. But you know what? There are ten, over 10 million books in the world. But there is no book to tell the future. This book, the Bible, is the only book that can tell the future very detailedly and it has been fulfilled. Yeah. In the history, I will show you some of the proofs. Okay. For example, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 54 to 55. So I will explain it. Uh, while I'm explaining, you can read this part. God is talking to Israel, God's own people, and says, if you abandon my law, if you abandon my covenant, I will. I will let you be uh, let you have destruction and the people will surround your city and this city the father and the son mother and the baby the mother will get the baby and father will get the son that kind of disaster will happen they will the parents will get their baby's flesh yeah. that's awful right that does not happen in a normal day life daily mm -hmm. life Mm. But you know what? It really happened as it is. When Israel abandoned God, Jehovah God, and when Israel worshipped other gods, you know what happened? God destroyed Jerusalem. When Jerusalem was destroyed, the armies of Babylon came and surrounded the city. And so for so many and so many days, that they were so hungry and hungry and hungry, you see this part? The mother is killing the baby to eat. And all those people are hungry to eat this baby. This actually happened in the history as it is written in the Bible. The Bible's prophecy is not vague. It does not say, um, maybe um, some time later. Two <laughs> pillars will stand. That's very fitting, right? <laughs> So if I build, uh, build the two buildings, I can say, oh, my prophecy is fulfilled. Two pillars have been established. But the Bible is not that big. The Bible is telling details. And it happened as it is in the history of Israel, God's own people. Not only that, uh, to study about the prophecy, we can talk about Daniel chapter 2. A lot of things is over in Daniel chapter 2. But briefly, I'll let you know. You know, um, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, had a dream. Yeah. And he, uh, yeah. he forgot about it. He forgot about it. And Daniel, who had a spirit of God, knew what he was, uh, what he was uh, his dream was. Yeah. And he told the dream and he interpreted the dream. And Daniel said, you have to bring the one big statue and the head is full, the arm uh, shoulders are uh, silver, and this part is a branch, and the legs are iron, and the uh, toes, hand toes are made with clay mm. and iron. And he said, the gold is you, king, the king of Babylon. So the gold symbolizes Babylon. And after the Babylon, 
He did not say he felt some country. He said Persia would come. And after that, the Greeks would come. The Rome would come. What are those countries? The empires, the world empire that has destroyed Jerusalem, that has conquered Jerusalem, that occupied Jerusalem. So, if you learn history, you will learn the history of the Middle East. And then when you uh, saw the history, you saw that after Babylon, yes, indeed, as the Bible says, the Persia came. And after the Persia, you know what? Alexander the Great, he conquered the world. And he's from Greece. His, uh, his empire is the Greek empire. The Greek empire. And after that, you know what happened? Caesar, the Rome, conquered the world. The world power. It just happened as the Bible said as it had it will happen. So if you have time, you can go on and read Daniel chapter 2, you will give you nine about these prophecies. So in Daniel chapter 8, there's another prophecy. Now it's more detailed. And as I was considering, behold, a he goat came from the west. So he goat, male goat, came from the west. So He's, in Daniel chapter 8, he's living in the empire of Persia. And he says, another empire will come from the west. And then, he came to the ram that had two horns. Now this Persia is a ram that has two horns. Because the Persia is made out of two countries, Mede and Persia. Mede Persia is a one country. And there's another country from the west is attacking the Persia and smote the ram and break his two horns. And there was nothing to deliver the ram out of his hand. So this is a goat. He goat has a one big horn. And he's attacking the ram with two horns. And the Bible, the Daniel is saying this. The ram which thou sowest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia, the king of Greece. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Who is the first king of the empire of Greece? Alexander the Great. So he's prophesying that the, the, the Greeks from the west will be an empire, and the first king will be the great horn, will attack the Persia and be the media and Persia, and this empire will be conquered by that king, the first king, which is Alexander the Great. You know what? When Alexander the Great conquered Media and Persia, they went to Jerusalem. And you know what they found? The rabbis, the priests, they brought the book of Daniels. And he's showing to the Alexander the Great, you king was prophesied in the Bible hundreds of years ago. Now we were here. And he showed the, the people, the priests, showed Alexander the Great what God said about him. And he was so shocked. You know what he did? Okay, I will not conquer Jerusalem. What do you want? I will grant that wishes. And they said, please leave our religion alone. Don't give text to our religion and leave our religion alone. And Alexander the Great says, yes, so be it. That's the actual history. So Alexander the Great was also written in the Bible hundreds of years before even he was born. Not only that, Alexander the Great died in a very early age, right? After he died, what happened to the kingdom? He was divided into the four kingdoms. That's history. The Bible says, now that being broken, now this great war, the first king is not dead, whereas four stood upon it. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nations. You see that? After the Alexander the Great died, the four kingdoms were divided out of the generals. Who can do that? Have you seen any book out of the 100 million books that can tell the future even before hundreds of years ago? The Bible is the only book. That's why I believe the Bible. Amen. Amen. I'm not just I'm not just superstitious. If I want to bet my life on something, I want to bet my life on the something very sure. The Bible is a very, very sure book. Amen. Amen. One more.
are. Cyrus, you know uh, there's a king of Cyrus in the Persia. He's the first king of the Persia. And Isaiah chapter 44 is before the captive of Israel. So about 250 years before Cyrus was born, Isaiah is a prophesying to people. Um, there will be a king of Cyrus, and he will set my people free, and he will let Israel go back to their land and let them build the temple. Because it was before, Isaiah was written before the captivity of Israel to Babylon. Israel was destroyed after hundreds of years, 